Well, good morning, church. <laughs> it is, it's good to be back. I can say that again. Uh, I, I, I'm officially over all the COVID and sickness. Where, where do, I know on a computer there's a little button that's called reset. That's supposed to put everything back to factory settings. When we find that, yeah. we really need to press the button because uh, it's. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Anyways, taking a look at our announcements this morning. Uh, Looks like the faith, food, and family menu for Wednesday is going to be pepper steak, rice, carrots, uh, salad, and the dessert will be bread pudding. Oh, that's my favorite. Or we changed it. Oh, we're changing it. Okay, what we got? Okay. What was it? Pork, fried apples, cabbage, and whatever the dessert's going to be. It'll be good. <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, that works. I'll take the bread pudding, whatever. Okay. Uh, as always, if you're interested in doing children's moments or reading scriptures or opening prayer or anything like that, feel free to grab a hold of me or uh, call Patty and we'll get you in the rotation. Uh, please join the Methodist men and women next Sunday after church in the fellowship hall for soup, sliders, and Sundays. It, we, I picked a bad time to go back on the diet. Uh, <laughs> as always, if you know anybody who would like to hear from me or see me, uh, please grab a hold of me and let me know. I'm trying to get through the directory again just to make sure I've gotten a hold of everybody, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always worried somebody's falling through the cracks, so uh, uh, make sure to grab a hold of me for that. Uh, on Monday, I didn't make it on here. Monday at 6 o'clock, there will be a PPRC meeting here. Uh, we will be in the library. Let's see. What else do we have here? Scholarships. If we are at the scholarship age, or you know folks that are at the, uh, the scholarship age, uh, if uh, you get a hold of me, there are specific United Methodist scholarships and grants available to our students. Uh, I, I don't believe there are... Uh, degree stipulations it's more like have you attended church and those kind of things and as one who used those can I urge you use those because they are a wonderful gift uh, the if it wasn't for our general board of higher education and ministry grants uh, they paid for a little over half of my seminary just through that alone so uh, we are grateful for those and please if if you're heading towards college uh, get a hold of me and I'll get, get you the information on how to get into those. Any other announcements? Anybody have anything they would like to share this morning? Well, all right, well, I'm going to invite Tom up to open us with prayer this morning. Let's pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us with an everlasting and unconditional love. Teach us to love others as you have loved us. We're thankful for those who have shared their love with us and your love with us. Teach us how to share your love in word and in deed. May others see Christ in our lives. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer. Amen. I just wanted to stop everything and take the time today to let you know how very thankful I am that you've been there for me. I want to say thanks for never giving up on me. Thank you for providing meals for us after Blake's surgery. Thanks for making sure I always had a ride to chemo. And thank you for helping me through this difficult season in my life, God. Thank you, God, for teaching me to be a strong single dad. Dear God, thank you so much for giving me this new job. I love it. 
Thanks for sending Jeff to take my shift last week so I could be with my family. For keeping me company on the first day of school. Thank you, God, for helping us get that bill paid. Thank you, God, for the clothes on my back. For giving me the courage to speak the truth. Thank you for forgiving me. For making my day better. For giving my life a melody. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For every single day. And one final thing, God. Thank you for always loving me. No matter what. All right, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, page 369. <laughs> seated. Well, who has a testimony this morning as my volunteers come and grab microphones? I would like to say once again, thank you for uh, all the different people that checked up on myself and Beth. Uh, everybody is uh, <laughs> hopefully recovered <laughs> beyond the usual tiredness and, and things like that after sickness, but uh, I think the worst symptom was the cabin fever. Uh, we, uh, I think Brody finally just decided to entertain himself by running through the living room, around the laundry room, the kitchen, the dining room, in one big circle, yelling choo-choo for hours at a time. So uh, we survived, uh, and thank you so much for keeping, keeping an eye on us. Red, is red on? There we go. Uh. Most of you know we weren't here last week because Chuck and I were sick. Thank God it was not COVID. It was uh, 
According to my doctor, it was just a really nasty viral infection, so heads up, that's going around too. But thankfully, we are both clean and clear with good bills of health now, so I just, I thank God that we're through that and hope nobody else gets it. <laughs> Amen. Any others? I'm thankful to see everybody this morning. I told Beth that after the, uh, the exposure last week, I said, I'm, I'm shooting for 20. If we could break 20, we're doing good. And by golly, we're almost crossing 40. So with the, the weather and everything else, that's not too bad. Well, all right, then uh, we'll move on and we'll invite Chris up and she's going to ring, read Psalm 150 for us. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Come on up, kids. You get me today. Oh. Okay, don't use that to brace yourself. Gather around. So, one of my favorite Bible stories comes from the book of Jeremiah. And it's called the potter's house. God sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house and the potter was making something out of the clay. And as he was working on it, he noticed that it wasn't going to work out. It got spoiled. There was something in it. It wasn't shaped right. Well, he just went and smushed it right down. Now, if it had been me, I might have went, well, that's just not any good clay and thrown it away. But see, I know little or nothing about that. But the, the potter was a professional. So he started working again and again, and he started working it. And soon enough, he had created something amazing. Now this was made by Cindy Biondi. She's a pastor in our area when they were raising money to go to the Holy Land. They sold uh, different communion sets that they were working on. You can guess that they were targeting other pastors because everybody lined up to get one. Now, it, beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it pretty? Really nice? My question is this. They, the, that scripture is talking about how God works in us so that we uh, are shaped into something that can be filled with His Spirit so that we can bless others. What happens then when something like this happens? The one and only thing that didn't survive the Is it done forever? No. With the right amount of know-how and glue, I could probably put this back together. You think it would still be useful then? Yeah. Just because something happens doesn't mean it's not it, that it's, uh, shall we say, trash. That's the same way with us. Just because something happens doesn't mean God gets rid of us. He holds on to us. He works with us. If I can do this and not break it more, He can put us right back together. Like nothing ever happened. And all my little tiny pieces are down in here. I've got all of them. So I want you to remember this morning that you can never go so far that God won't happily take you back. Can you remember that? All right. Would anybody like to pray this morning? Ooh, dear eyes on that one. All right, I'll pray for us. Let's bow.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children here this morning, and we just ask your blessing upon each one of them. We pray that you put a light in their life that with every step draws them closer to you and you place a hedge of protection about them, Heavenly Father, that they might be protected from the dangers in this world. And we give you thanks, Lord, and we lift this in the precious name of Jesus Christ and all men. And I've got something. I just forgot to grab it. As long as it's still back here anyways. Yes, it is. Good. I was counting on this still being here. Is Winston allowed a sucker? <laughs> I don't think I heard. Ah, is Winston allowed a sucker? <laughs> All right. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, who do we need to carry to lay before the feet of Christ this morning? <laughs> the rest of the choir, exactly. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember the Hendrixes, Phyllis and Ansel, and they had three boys, Stephen, Kevin, and Alan, and they lived in our community for several years. The boys all graduated from Scott. They moved to Alabama. Kevin is DJ and Matt's age, and he passed away this week from a heart attack. Oh so. I'd like for you to have, pray for that family. They're just devastated. And what was the family name again? Hendricks. Henry's? Hendricks. Hendricks, gotcha. We need to continue to keep uh, Harold and Ginger Green in our prayers, as well as uh, Mary Brown. Uh, I did get to talk to uh, Jim Bob. Uh, surprised me when I called, he answered the phone. So uh, yeah, he, he's getting some of his dexterity back, and uh, it, it was a blessing to talk with him for a little bit. But I haven't had a recent update since she's gone to Pittsburgh. Um, many of you here know Chuck's brother, Rob, uh, who grew up here. He lives in North Carolina now and has for some years. Um, Rob had what we thought was a minor health issue, and um, after surgery, it's turned into something larger. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob is 50, how old is Rob? 50, 55, and um, he was diagnosed with cancer, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's fairly serious. So if you all could pray for Rob, and please pray for Buck and Grace. They've lost two sons in two years, and now this is a, a third one that's ill. So. Yes, we need to keep Patty in our prayers, though she, as she somewhat threateningly told me that she would be back in the office on Monday. Uh, so uh, pray, for, pray for Rod, uh, who I imagine is trying to take care of her and for Patty's quick recovery and as she goes through these treatments. Tom. Continue. Remember Tom Hale as he recovers. Mark stayed. So the Angelo family. Continue to pray for Kevin Glisby. That's um, Paula's brother and Angie's brother. I think he did get to get out of ICU yesterday. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Please remember my cousin, Joel Kennedy. He's uh, on a kidney transplant list. He lives in Michigan. Keep him in your prayers. Any others? All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you 
for the joy it is to be able to come and just lay our burdens down before you. Knowing, Lord, that you've asked, to do, asked us to do exactly that. Lord, like the group who carried the paralyzed man, or really dig through a roof to get them to you. We just pray, Heavenly Father, for all those who have been lifted up here this morning. We pray for those who are in need of healing. We pray for those who are in mourning. For those who are waiting on miracles and every other situation in between. We just lift them up to you, Heavenly Father, and we, li we, we do so, Heavenly Father, not, not just waiting to see what will happen, but we do so, Lord, in the knowledge that you will be at work in each life. So, Father, we just thank you, and we lift each one of these both spoken and unspoken up to you, as we pray the prayer in which you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will those helping with the offering please come forward. Soft is the voice of an angel, breathing the lessons unheard. Hope with a gentle persuasion, whispering comforting word. Wait till the darkness is over, wait till the tempest is done. Hope for the sunshine tomorrow After the shower is gone Whispering hope Oh, well, well come thy voice Making my heart in its sorrow rejoice Thank you. 
to try to control our future. At times we've been tempted to believe that in gaining more, we would find salvation. Open our ears and minds to hear the truth from your apostle Paul. We need only to hold firmly to the good news of Christ's death and resurrection. It alone will save us. In the holy name of Jesus, our Redeemer, we pray. pray. Amen. <coughs> I, I just want to say before we <clears throat> begin this that uh, as we take communion this morning, uh, growing up, uh, communion was always a part of my life. I actually grew up in a church where we took communion every Sunday, and it was always, uh, we, it, we really need, we do the motions all the time, we read the what what you know what we're told to read but we need I, this morning it's real important that we sit and think about what that represents what we're doing how what what does that represent when we do these motions but it, it represents something so much bigger than just the bread and the juice that we drink it represents uh someone who who made the ultimate sacrifice for us and so this this song is about remembering that and it's real important that when we do the communion this morning that we take that time to reflect and remember what does this really mean what we're doing this morning what is this representing This is the body that was torn for us. This is the blood that was spilled. Points to the pain you endured for us. Points to the shame, the blame, the guilt. Oh, 
I invite you to stand now, turn to page 378, and we're going to sing Amazing Grace. And we'll follow the verses on the screen. be seated. This morning we're going to begin in the book of Hebrews 10. But before we get there, let me tell you what we're going to talk about. We're still, we're still in the sermon series where I call it Things Christians Say. And it's just those things that come out of our mouth. And I think so far we've managed to do, uh, you know, be angry but don't sin. And We've gone over several uh, in, uh, about a year ago. Well, this morning we're going we're gonna to talk about that, bless you. Which, you know, if, if somebody sneezes, immediately what do you generally say? Bless you. Uh, it, it comes out in different ways in our southern heritage. Uh, if somebody says something that is, uh, shall we say, special in a, usually way, in a usual way, it usually comes out as, all oh, bless her heart. Uh, which, which is both a blessing and a small insult in the same way, depending on how far south you go. So where, where exactly does this idea of, what does it mean, first of all? We say it all the time. We say, God bless you. God bless America. Bless their heart. It, this word bless comes out a lot. What, what exactly does it mean? Well, if, if you break into all the books that I'm sure you've got at home just like me, <laughs> it goes way back to the Hebrew which the word is Barak, which sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. Sounds like it should be a Klingon gentleman who's very upset. But it means to kneel. 
Because when you would be blessed by a king or something like that, you would start out by kneeling before them. So it, it begins with humbling ourselves, is what blessing is. And when we ask for blessings, or when we ask for blessings for others, it begins in a word that we really don't like, submission. We don't like that word, but it, it simply means that we are acknowledging that God is much greater than we are. And it's also rooted in grace and gift because we, it is not, God is not obligated to bless us. He does so out of his love for us. So before, before I get too far along, let, let, me, let, me, let me pray for us this morning. Father, as we begin to dig in and understand what it, exactly it means that you bless us and that we are called to bless others. I pray that your Holy Spirit just comes and ministers to every heart that is not only here, Heavenly Father, but all those who may be joining us online as well. I pray that whether by my words or by your spirit, that they would receive a blessing this morning. And I pray, O oh Father, that you just take me and hide me behind your cross. That this is your word for your glory alone, for the transformation of all of us. And we give you thanks and lift this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So, our blessing is rooted in humbling ourselves to God. Which is rooted in faith. Which is an interesting thing. It would, it, I love it because when you begin to look into these things, you find that all these different words that we use a lot, like faith and love and grace, they're all intertwined. They don't, none of them are really separate from one another because but we won't humble ourselves to God unless we have faith in our God. And our faith is in the blood of Jesus Christ, which is, which is what we call our confession, which is the grace and love of God. Which all begins, and this is the scripture we're going to begin out of, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus... By the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near so we cling first to our confession our confession that Jesus is Lord, to the blood of Jesus Christ, that, that he came for us, that he lived and taught, that his, in his death he paid, and suffering he paid for our sins, and that his, in his resurrection we gain eternal life. Our blessing is rooted first in humbling ourselves to a God who loved us enough to do that. Our faith relies solely in the blood of Jesus Christ and the love of our God. So we cling to that confession of our hope and, and, and our foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ because they, and we proclaim that every, uh, every time we have communion as we go through our liturgy. And I, I wish we'd ask, add on to it a little bit because we always start with Christ died. And I think we should start with Christ was born. Christ lived and taught. Then, yes, Christ died. Christ rose and Christ is coming again. But we don't just stop there. The, the gift of a blessing is rooted, is in, that, in, that is rooted in our grace stirs us up and points us towards others. And I love that. That thing, that, that commentary that it says there. Let, it be stir, let us be stirred up not only to do good, but to stir it up in others. <clears throat> There's a different way of translating that, and I really think it should go this way. And it says this, let us provoke one another 
into love and good and into the love of Jesus Christ. And the word provoke would specifically be like if you've got two siblings that are near one another, if you give them enough time, they'll give you a, per a perfect definition of provoke. Stop touching me. I'm not touching you. Mommy's touching me. I'm not touching him. I said stop touching me. I'm not touching you. I'm sure that's never happened. <laughs> Whereas they provoke one another to anger, we are called through the blessings of Jesus Christ to provoke one another to love and good works. In other words, one way we might say it is that we are blessed and we receive those blessings so that we might therefore go and bless others. Galatians says it this way. This is Galatians chapter 6. The first 10 verses. It says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own works, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit for will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who, of our, who are of the household of faith. Bless one another means more than just saying, I hope you feel better. Bless one another means more than just, I worry about them. Being a blessing to one another says carrying one another's burdens. It means that when things get difficult, we don't walk alone because we are surrounded by the community of faith. It means that we are blessed and as we have humbled ourselves and realized that it is only by the blood of Jesus Christ that any of us are making it through this life. So that means that I am not greater than anybody else here. And vice versa. And so we are called to love and to carry one another's burdens and to look out and to see how we might be a blessing to one another. So that not only do we make it. But this world might see something different in us. And there's a difference when Christians help one another or when Christians help anybody. And I used to use this example all the time. And it would be like saying this. If, if I'm driving by Sue Ann's house and I see that her mailbox has fallen over. Now, she might have a concrete mailbox. This, this might not work. I can't remember. And I see her out there, and she's just kind of got her hands on her hips, and she's shaking her head. If I decide to go help her get things taken care of, the why is important. The why is always important. If I'm going to go help Sue Ann simply because I love Sue Ann, and because I know that she probably wants her mailbox to be in working order, that's a good thing. Now, as I would say this to the kids when I would share something like this for the children's message. Now, if I was pretty sure that Sue Ann had just made a big old chocolate cake. And I went to go help Sue Ann because I was pretty sure that I was going to get at least a slice of that chocolate cake. That's different. If I could say it another way, one of the unique things about our current world is that we have a whole lot of people with pictures where there's a gentleman with a plate out, they've got money in their hand and a camera taking a picture of it here. You understand what I mean? If I could re-weigh re something, 
Those who make sure to get a picture of themselves helping somebody else so that they can get the social media credit, you've already received your blessing. God is not mocked. God doesn't say, oh, you, you helped so that everybody else could see you be good. I'm going to bless you for that. He'll bless the person that you helped. You already got your blessing. That's scripture, by the way. Reap to the flesh and you have your reward. It's as simple as that. The reward is corruption and ultimately destruction. So to the spirit, love like Christ, your gain is eternal life. We are blessed so that we might be a blessing. And that's, that's something that is said in church, but it's something that I wonder, kind of like Cameron was talking about, going through the motions. If it's something that we just, we've heard so many times that we really don't hold on to it or understand it. Do we really understand that God receives our, that we receive our blessings from God? Yes, because he loves us and he wants us to prosper and he wants to provide for us. But in the same way, we also receive those blessings so that we might go and bless somebody else. In other words, we are not just blessed for our own good. We are blessed to do good to others. And I love how the author of Galatians says it. He says, and your practice ground for that is right here. It starts in the community of faith. You love one another here so that we make sure that when we walk out those doors, we, we know how to do it. We, we bless one another here so that when we walk out those doors, we know how to do it. Because let's be honest, folks, we're like a big family. And if you know anything that, about families, it's that they, they do two things really well. They love one another and they fight. And I don't know about you, but I've never been in a church that has not fought about something. In fact, I have been in some churches that have fought about some of the most idiotic things I've ever seen in my life because we're really good about that. We are. And so the scriptures say your grace, your blessings, your love starts in the community of faith because we're one another's test subjects. Congratulations, you are a holy guinea pig. Because somebody who is new to the faith is going to learn to love by one, watching how you love someone else, watching how you bless someone else, and then they're going to try and do it to you. And you might look at that, 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 that muffin that somebody spent all the day working on, and it's got at least two toenails and one hair in, but they loved you enough to give it to you. And you look at me and go, that's gross. That's real life, folks. <laughs> That's a testimony of personal experience. <laughs> Maybe not the toenails, but it was... <laughs> it was a blessing is what it was. We have, I, mean, I mean, I grew up, and I can say this about Ruby, because A, I was related to her, which means in West Virginia, that means it's giving you permission to talk about him. And B, she's up in heaven, so she'll throw some snowballs at me or something for talking about her. But she had the most extreme passion for cooking. And she wanted to make sure that whenever there was a church potluck, that she wanted to bless everybody with her food. The only problem was Ruby did not know how to cook. <laughs> that was the one dish. By the way, if you don't know this, and if you don't know this, please share it, because I don't think we've got to do a potluck yet. Um, whenever the new pastor would come to the church, we would be going, walking through the dinner, and everybody would go, look at all this stuff, don't eat that. Uh, and, because if you did, you knew who, was, who ate the food because they weren't going to be at church next Sunday. But there was a love that went into that. And we were the guinea pigs. That's just one example. We learn to love here. We learn to bless here. And the foundation for all of that is learning to be loved by God, humbling ourselves before God and the truth of our confession that he loved us so much that he gave us Christ and he loved us enough to give us Christ. Why would he not hold? Why would he hold back the good gifts? 
That's why we sang Blessed Assurance again, because I love that opening verse. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. That is our testimony right there. We are a blessing because of everything that God has done for us. We are filled up with those blessings. That's the, I, I almost brought a, a, a non-broken cup up. This one's already chipped too, so it's okay. We are filled up not just to the top. Not just so that we are good and, and that we have enough and everything is fine. We are blessed until it just runs out everywhere. There's an old southern gospel song out there that says, My cup is overflowing, so I'm sipping from my saucer. That's what it means to be a Christian. That we are blessed to the fact that it just flows out of us so that we might then and go be a blessing to others. God doesn't just say, go do it. God equips you in order to do it. You are blessed so that then you can go out and bless others. Now, we can add that little secondary piece. Not just bless you, but bless your heart. In the English understanding, the heart is the core of who you are. It is the center of love. Bless your heart. Bless everything there is about you. If you really want to bless someone's heart, give them Jesus. If you really want to be blessed, receive him. As we come... To the communion table. My mic doesn't work, so I'm just going to try to go loud. This is a blessing. And I love the image. Even though it's weird, even though it's different, even though we're using these things, it's still a blessing. Because I love the image that when, when Jesus knew that his time had come, of all the different ways he could have done it. He gathered his disciples. He gathered his friends together so that they might understand what is going to happen. And he did it so that they might know how loved they really are. And I love it because they had no idea what was going on while he did it. Because there was a set liturgy to what we call the Last Supper. And it was one of those liturgies that existed forever and ever, and you might follow with it, and that's the way we've always done it. And Jesus was going through the liturgy as a good rabbi would, and I'm sure they were all kind of zoning out. And then he broke the bread, and he held it up. And there was supposed to be words that Jesus uttered. And instead, Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And imagine they all kind of Jerked up a little bit. And I like to think they kind of looked at each other and went, did he know he said the wrong thing? Peter might have leaned over and went, it's okay, it's his first time. And then it went back. I mean, this I, 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 we did this when I was younger, when Reverend Arthur was at the church at Jarrett. He decided to go through this whole Seder service. It is not short by any means. And we didn't have it the five cups of wine to help you get through but when he gets to the last cup, he holds up the cup and he says, this is the cup of salvation. My blood shed for you, for all who would receive it. And that wasn't what he was supposed to say. And they had no idea. But that doesn't change that God is working. We had no idea what was going on when there was 400 years and there hadn't been any prophet whatsoever. We had no idea what was going on when, when there was a star in the sky that nobody could really explain. Then there was this, this baby and that was just weird and then things get back to normal. And then suddenly he's at the temple teaching and it's, it's amazing and nobody has any idea what's going on because this, this kid is teaching over top of rabbis. And they can't explain it, and then he's gone. And then we just, we just have a, a missing chunk 
And I want to know what Jesus did in those years. I want to sit down with Mary one day. And I know Mark Lowry wrote that song of it, but I really want to know what Jesus was like as a teenager. Because I remember being a teenager. I can still do that. But nobody understood what was going on. And then there's the wedding, then there's all the teachings, there's all these things. And everybody assumes that, that the earthly kingdom is going to be set up here and now. And instead Jesus is captured and dies and crucified. And nobody understands it. Everybody assumes that it's just all messed up. And then they come to an empty tomb. And it's entirely different. We didn't know, we didn't expect, but God did it, it, did it anyway. And then we see the Holy Spirit come, we see the church founded, and we see 2,000 years of people doing their best to follow Jesus. And we didn't always understand, but it didn't stop God. And as we gather together this morning, we gather around this, this bread and this juice, even though, even though it's unique, remember to open the bread first. That's the, only, that's the only one you got with these. Just open the bread side first. And you go. Even though it's unique, we, we, we understand that as we receive communion, that this is a blessing from God because God is here with us in a unique way as we do it. So our ushers are going to invite you to come. And I invite you, take it seriously and really take a moment and just listen for God. Listen, whether it comes as a blessing, whether it comes as a feeling, where, however He might speak to you, be willing to receive. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we gather, we pray that Your Holy Spirit might be at work here, that You would fling wide the floodgates of Your power and Your glory, and that You would flood this place. We pray your blessings upon these elements that they might be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be for this world the body of Christ redeemed and going out for the transformation of this world. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as each one of us comes, that your Spirit might minister to each one of us. And Lord, in all things, we just trust you and we come willing and ready to receive. So Father, we just ask your blessings upon us, upon this time, and upon these elements. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, page 377. <laughs>
reminded me that, yes, we are indeed having our study tonight. Does anybody remember, was that 6 or 6.30? I want to say 6. It was at 6 o'clock. So, yeah, we'll be gathering this evening uh, to continue watching The Chosen and discuss after that. I know popcorn's on the plan, but if anybody wants to bring a, a treat, you're more than welcome to. And then we are going to begin the book of Esther uh, Bible study this Tuesday, and it, that'll be at 6 as well. Uh, the booklets for that are on the table right as you come through the front door, and they're, they're free. Just go ahead and grab them. Um, but brothers and sisters, you have been blessed. God loves you. Go out and be the blessing that he has called you to be. Go with God. Thank you.